Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 588. There is a genetic basis for being high risk to reactions from vaccines. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about a subject and a study that I actually participated in with my 23andMe account. Now 23andMe is a company who has been gathering genetic data over the last more than 10 years and has been finding new medical findings, new insights into individual medicine based on our genes. So For example, I get reports that say, are you at risk for macular degeneration? Well, my father had macular degeneration, and I've always been afraid of that and afraid of going blind. Well, my genes show that I am not at risk, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. And that is the beauty of knowing where you stand with your own genetics. But today we're going to use the study done by 23andMe that was begun a year and a half ago at the onset of the COVID crisis and the pandemic, where they began asking questions or surveys or questionnaires of their uh, clients who had agreed to have their genetics used in these studies. So I had already agreed to have my genetics used in studies. I felt like that was important. I felt like we should donate our own genetic genetic templates to the research of what diseases are carried on what genes and what, um, like they can tell that my eyes are brown and they can tell that my my skin is dark but not not like, like my dad's was darker than mine because my mom was very light, and so I have kind of a skin tone in between. They can tell um, whether I have fast twitch or slow slow twitch muscles, which tells me what what kind of sports I'll be good at and what I shouldn't even attempt. So fast twitch, I should be lifting weights, sprinting, doing short bursts of of activity, but not long-distance running, marathons. Um, Those are not my specialty, and they aren't. My genetics do uh, test out to be right in terms of the sports that I've picked. But let's get down to this pandemic and using the genetics that they already have with the answers of a survey asking every, I think I, I got it every several months, have you had COVID yet? What were your symptoms? What, uh, how bad was it? How long did it last? That kind of thing. Then they asked, um, have you, when the vaccines came out, they said, have you been vaccinated? And what vaccine did you get? And uh, did you have any kind of side effects? Did you have long-term side effects? Did you have short-term side effects? Did you have just soreness in your arm? Uh, They asked everything about it, and they kept asking over a year and a half. They then compiled um, the data that they had gotten. And what I'm going to talk about now is not my finding, but the findings of 23andMe that was posted on their blog and um, the answer to the question, are you at higher risk of getting a side effect uh, from the COVID, one of the COVID vaccines? And the reason this is important to me is that it is not widely known to the public that there are some severe side effects that come from getting the vaccine. Now, I have to say, the side effects in general aren't death, which is if you get a COVID vaccine and you have a susceptibility to getting a severe COVID uh, um, infection, that it might kill you. So the vaccine would save your life. But it may, if you take the vaccine in certain people, you may have lifelong problems, such as JAMA this week said... um, The side effect of the COVID vaccine 
um, in young men, young healthy men who got myositis or cardiac myositis, which is like a an um, autoimmune attack on their cardiac muscle, which then destroys the muscle to some in some amount, which decreases your ability to do things, decreases your ability to be healthy, and this doesn't just come back. That is one of the risks. They came out uh, a week or so ago in JAMA saying that the vaccine um, had caused atrial fibrillation in many of the people who had gotten it. And atrial fibrillation isn't something to be sneezed at. I have had it, not from this, had this for years, and have had the very complex procedure done to ablate the area of inflammation that causes my, uh, my heart to race and skip beats. So that's not a nothing side effect. There are others that I, I won't go into. Um, this is not meant to scare you. This is just meant to say when, when governmental panic happens, they make a one-size-fits-all answer. That's how, they're not looking at you as a person, as a genetically different person than the person next to you. They're looking at you as a, a human being who needs to be protected and the only way they know to protect us is with vaccines. So they don't go into all these side effects like you would see on a drug that's on television where they go, oh yeah, you can have kidney failure and you can, and you can even die and blah, 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 you know, when they start listing this stuff. They don't have to do that because it's a state of emergency. And they've brought the vaccines, which have saved millions of lives through the process very quickly of going through FDA approval. Because of this, this article describes what they found when they matched the response to the vaccine and genetics. So what it turns out to be is that they found that, in general, your genetic susceptibility has to do with your HLA type. Let me just say what that is. You've heard of HLA typing in terms of kidney, uh, kidney or heart or lung or, or liver transplants because you, to, for your body to accept another organ, the HLA type has to be the same. So it is actually uh, an antigen or a, um, a specific genetically um, developed antigen on your cells that makes you you and makes your cells not attack your own cells. So your white cells don't attack your own cells. So HLA typing is very important, but we all have different HLA types. That's why it's so hard to find a donate, a, a, a person who is um, donating their kidney or some other organ for a particular uh, person who needs it. But they found that there is a relationship between your HLA type and getting a severe reaction to the vaccine or getting no reaction at all. So they've determined, there's three types that they've determined. It will be, it's, it will be listed in my blog from their blog, uh, the different HLA types. You may, I don't know my HLA type, so... Uh, you may not know that either. Um, we could, you could do a blood test and find out. But uh, this is something that we should know. We should know that if we are this, and we should be able to have a test for it, then we're going to have a severe reaction or we're going to have no reaction at all before we take a particular medicine or even uh, a vaccine because that would then give us an ability to say, I'm high risk, I need to think about doing something that I've been told to do and weigh my risk and benefits. So if my risk of being having some terrible side effect from a vaccine is very high and I have had, say I had already had COVID, well, I already have antibodies to COVID and my, the vaccine might give me side effects, then maybe my own immunity is enough to carry me through and I shouldn't get this, the shot. That's what we're really talking about. So the findings of vaccines and the, um, and the 23andMe was that the people that have severe reactions, the, the big group of people, not specific genetics, but the big group of people that have the most side effects from the vaccine are young women, um, and they said certain HLA types. They also said that um, if you are... Um, if you're diabetic, if you're obese, those are other things that can be genetically related but are 
also, you know, if you're diabetic, you know, if you're, if you have um, obesity. So those are also things that increase the likelihood of having a bad outcome from getting the vaccine. They wrote, we have found some genetic variants in a complex of genes involved in human uh, immune response that are associated associated with being more likely to have a strong reaction to the vaccine and make some other people less likely. Um, this allowed their scientists to explore all the genetics and see who would overreact to the vaccine. The um, three vaccines work by teaching your immune system to, to go out and attack what looks like a piece of the virus or looks like the virus itself, so that it is ready when the virus does come into contact with you, your white cells are ready to jump out and attack it. Now the problem, go, the side effects happen when your immune system overreacts to that sensitized um, piece of virus, or when your um, own immune system actually looks at another tissue in your body and says, ooh, that's that virus. I'm going to attack it, like the heart. Um, they've also had lung issues uh, from the vaccine, including um, pulmonary embolisms. And um, they've also had, I mean, and that can be, that's a deadly problem. There's, a, there's an entire floor on barns in our city that has pulmonary emboli, both from COVID vac vaccines and from getting COVID. So you can get it either way. So um, I think it is important that you know that we are researching these things and we are looking for people um, to help us research it. If you, if you spent your $99 to get your genetics done, they asked you if you would like to participate in their studies. And then if you say yes, you'll be sent questionnaires about your history, your diseases, your medications, how you respond to all of these things. It's very interesting. And you will help them find out what, what people should in the future take yet another booster or not, and what people should take the vaccine um, because they have a high risk of getting a severe type of, of COVID. In our next uh, health cast, I am going to talk about long haulers. And what that means is long haulers are people who have had um, COVID itself, COVID, not the vaccine, but COVID infection, and ha it has caused uh, damage to their different tissues or their different systems in their bodies. And it takes them a very long time to recover. So 23andMe has done studies on long haulers, and we will discuss the uh, the way they've done it, and also who is most at risk for becoming a long hauler, those people definitely should get the vaccine. Because if you're going to be a long hauler, you don't want to live with the side effect that came from getting COVID the rest of your life. And, and those patients are also the ones that are at higher, highest risk of dying. So if you have those genetics, you definitely should be getting um, a vaccine to prevent the actual disease. So we will be discussing what 23andMe has found out about that next week. I hope this helped you make some decisions for yourself or to talk to your doctor. If you honestly have, um, if you've had other autoimmune diseases, if you have had a bad reaction to the first vaccine, then you should talk to your doctor before you get a booster because that next reaction can be even worse just because of your genetic type. So I'd like to invite you all to hear the second half of, of this talk next week with us at BioBalance HealthCast. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.